فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to our program Parents Rights in Islam where we've been discussing various aspects of how parents should be treated by their children how they should be honored how they should be respected and how their children should provide for them once they reach a certain age and how that children can have mercy for them and the benefits of those actions and the difficulty if one doesn't pursue that type of action with their parents. Being good to one's parents is one of the greatest and most important obligations found in the religion of Islam. It's part of clear instructions that Allah SWT has sent down to human beings with his book and on the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it tells the rights that are due to everyone who has a right it gives full details about these rights who should receive these rights in life and if there are rights that they should still receive benefits they still should receive after they die who should receive those and how should they be Allah is clear about the rights between spouses husbands and wives he's clear about the rights that parents will have over the, over the children. The Quran as soon as clear about the children's rights with their parents, clear about the rights of neighbors, about the rights of orphans, about the rights of near relatives, and the rights of brotherhood, al khuwah in Islam, between the brothers and the sisters. The legislation sent down by Allah SWT is justice and it commands justice. Among the verses that illustrate the comprehensive command of Allah to fulfill the rights that he has sent down is his statement, أَعُوذِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَاعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُلْبَ وَالْجَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَجَارِ ذِي الْقُلْبَ وَجَارِ الْجُنُبْ وَالصَّحِبِ الْجَنْبِ the translation of which is Worship Allah and join, and join none with Him in worship and do good to your parents and your kinfolk, your relatives and to the orphans and the poor and the neighbor who is near of kin, and the neighbor who is a stranger, and the companion by your side, and the wayfarer who you meet, and those slaves whom your right hand possess. Verily Allah does not like those that are proud and boastful. And this is found in Surah Nisa, verse 36. Well, this is found in Surah Ad Imran, Verse 36. And he, the Most High, says, قُلْ تَعَالَوْا أَتْلُ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَانِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاقَ نَحْنُ نُرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَاكُمْ بِهِ نَعَنَّكُمْ تَعْقِنُونَ Say, O Muhammad sallam, Come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with him, meaning with Allah. Be good and dutiful to your parents. Do not kill your children because of poverty. We provide sustenance for you and for them. And don't come near to fawahish, sinful sins, 
illegal intimacy between men and women, etc. Whether committed openly or secretly, and don't kill anyone who lies forbidden, except for a just cause it's not according to Islamic law. This he has commanded you that you may understand. As the Surah An-Am, the number six Surah, verse 151. And Allah the Almighty says, again, dealing with the rights that he has given people. and we have enjoined on human beings to be dutiful and good to his parents. His mother bore him in weakness and hardship upon weakness and hardship. And his weaning is in two years. Give thanks to me, meaning Allah, and to your parents, Unto me is the final destination. Dear viewers, our discussion in the last episodes centered upon the honor Allah gives to mothers specifically. And when it comes to mercy and good treatment, mothers have a superior position to fathers in that regard. Afterwards, the discussion focused upon the status of fathers in Islam. Today, inshallah, we will continue that topic, the status of the father in Islam. But before we do that, I would like to point out some specifics about the word parents in Islam, the word parents in the Quran. It is used in the noble and tremendous Quran in two different ways. Two different words denote, signify the word parents. Allah's book uses two different words to express the concept of parents. It uses the Arabic word al-walidain. And for the most part, that's what we hear. Well, bil walidaini ihsana. And be good to your parents. As when Allah says, wa'budullaha, Worship Allah and join none with him in worship and do good to parents. So it's in Nisa, verse 36. Another term or the other term, the other word that the Quran uses to describe parents is al abawain as in the last statement, In this verse, the word Abawain is used. Allah commands you regarding your children's inheritance to the male a portion equal to that of two females. If there are only two daughters, two or more, their share is two-thirds of the inheritance. If only one, her share is half. For parents, a sixth share of inheritance to each if the deceased left children. So it's in Isa, verse 11. So here, the verse, not Wadidain, but Abawain. إِذَا تَتَبَرْنَا كَلَامْ رَبَّنَا عَزَّ وَجَّلْ سَنَّجِ أَنَّهُ حَيْثُ مَا وَرَدَتْ كَلِمَةُ وَالِدَيْنِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَلِيمِ فَفِيهِ تَغْلِيبْ لِلْأُمْ عَلَى جِيهَةِ الْأَبْ لِذَلِكَ نَجِدْ فِي كُلِّ آيَاتِ الَّتِي تُحُثُّ 
والإحسان إليهما والدعاء لهما نجد فيها كلمة والدين وليس أبوين If we reflect upon the words of our Lord Azza wa Jal, we will see the word Al-Walidain is mainly leaning toward the side of Al-Wilada. Al-Wilada is giving birth to children. Furthermore, verses that contain this form of the word parents encourage honoring the parents, supplicating for them, showing them kindness, and mercy and respect. Whereas the word al abawain is mainly leaning toward the meaning of al ab or the father. Al ab in Arabic language means literally the reason that something exists or is corrected or is given distinction. A father is called Abu because he is the one that has to establish the tarbiyah. He is the one who has to establish the cultivation, the education of the children, as well as correct their behavior and provide them with nourishment. The word al-walid means the direct parental parent, al-walid because he is the reason for the existence of the child. So we have al wadidain and we have al abuin Depending upon the context, you can see how the two words are used. And, it, and they both the words, they both mean the parents. The Quran and the Sunnah depict fathers as possessing a very significant role in the life of their children. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Al-Walidu Awsatu Abu'abu Jannati When shi'ta Fadi' Dalik al-Bab Aw ahfithu The Father is the middle gate to paradise. So if you wish then neglect that door or protect it. Evidence of the significance that the Quran gives to the position of fatherhood. One of the evidences is the fact that Islamic law does not allow adoption that nullifies a lineage to the child's real father. Allah says, وَمَا جَعَلَ الْأَدْعِيَاءَكُمْ أَبَنَاءَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ nor has he Allah made your adopted sons your real sons. That is but your saying with your mouths. But Allah says the truth. And he guides to the right way. Call them, meaning the adopted sons, by the names of their fathers. That is more just to Allah. An adi'iya, this first, this word found in the Quran, an adi'iya, an warid, an nabi kana rajul yadi'ihi wa huwa laysa lahu. أو يدعى إليه بسبب تبنيه إياه كما أن أمر بالجاهلية وأول إسلام فأراد الله تعالى أن يبتله ويزينه فقدم بين يديه ذلك بيان قبحه وأنه باطل وكذب وكل باطل وكذب لا يوجد في شرع الله the adi'iya, the claimed one, the one who is claimed as a child of a parent and is not actually the parent's child, are the adopted children that people claim are theirs. But in fact, these children are not theirs by birth. It is only a claim. This was a common practice among the pre Islamic Arabs in a time of ignorance and the beginning of Islam. 
by adopting an orphan or a helpless child. They used to consider adopted child or the adopted child as their own. And they used to pass on to the, adopt, the adopter's genealogy and his name. So if a person adopted a child, known as Atabenni, they would give the child a name and his genealogy as though he was born into his family line. This investment of them, of them with all the rights of a legitimate son, including that of inheritance and their prohibition of marriage on the grounds of common ancestry between the father and son. So not only did they give the name, the genealogy, but if that man, that boy married a lady, then the father couldn't marry that lady if he divorced her because it'd be assumed you're marrying your father's ex-wife. Or if the other way around, if the father, uh, the father would divorce the mother, he would say he's marrying his father's ex-wife. And of course, that's not allowed in Islam, not between relatives. Allah wanted to, he willed to undo the practice of adopting children in this way because it is false. And so he exposed the falsehood of this practice and clarified it as unacceptable. Everything which is immoral and unacceptable cannot remain in Islamic legislation, nor can a believer be described with it. يُجْعُونَ إِلَيْكُمْ أَبْنَأَكُمْ فَإِنَّ أَبْنَأَكُمْ فِي الْحَقِيقَةِ مَنْ وَلَدَتْتُمُوهُمْ وَكَانُوا مِنْكُمْ أَمَّا هَؤُلَّاءِ الْأَدْعِيَاءِ مِنْ غَيْرِكُمْ فَلَا جَعْلَ اللَّهُ هَذَا كَهَذَا Therefore, you should call the children that are actually related to you, your children. Adopted children are not the same as your natural children. And what the Dhammina قول باطن فقال ادعوهم أي ادعياء لآبائهم الذين ولدوهم وهو أقصت عند الله أي أعدل وأقوم so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that they leave that first condition and instead call the children by their father's names because that would be the fairer thing, the more just thing to do. More about this in our next episode, inshallah. I'm Talib Abdullah for the Charger Broadcast Authority. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا